Patients of mine ask me all the time, Dr. Milhouse, how can I stop this UTI from happening ever again? First thing I tell them is number one, understand and know that bacteria live among us. While there are ways that we have to lower or reduce your risk of a UTI, we cannot eliminate the risk completely altogether. That's like trying to find the cure to the cold and never having a cough or a sniffle again. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. First thing, hydration is key. Dilution is the solution. Hydration has been shown to reduce UTI frequency. Think about it. The more we're flushing things out, we're diluting hopefully the concentration of bacteria in your urine, decreasing its ability to infect your bladder. Number two, stop doing certain things that might actually be making it worse, like douching and using products in the vagina or vulva that wipe out or that increase your pH. The pH in the vagina and vulva is supposed to be a little bit acidic. This is a good thing. What douching does um, and other like products is they ruin or disturb that normal pH and that increases the count of bad bacteria because the good bacteria are, are uh, cannot thrive in that environment. And so the bad guys win and the good guys are losing. Other other products that do this, spermicide. So spermicide um, or spermicide condoms also kill off the good bacteria and change the, the dynamics that make it more favorable for the UTIs to infect your bladder. Number three, estrogen is bay. If you are going through menopause or have gone through menopause, estrogen in the vagina, in the vulva is bay. Why? Because it helps to restore or that pH. That pH is light. pH that is a little bit acidic that allows the good bacteria to flourish, the good guys, and the bad bacteria to have less of a chance of making it, okay? This actually is one of the top recommendations for reducing bladder infections or UTIs in postmenopausal women who suffer from three or more UTIs per year. So, estrogen, get it down there, all right? Number four, cranberry. So almighty cranberry, I'm sure your mom and them, your auntie told you, drink some cranberry juice, this and that. Here's a skinny on cranberry. Cranberry has been studied extensively, but in variable amounts. Some of the studies are not well um, designed to uh, be accurate. Um, and so cranberry might be beneficial for some patients, but it really has to be high dose. The problem is a lot of supplements uh, will list milligrams of cranberry, which is not a useful information. What you want to see is this active ingredient called proanthocyanidins or PAC. PACs are the active ingredient and it should list how many milligrams that has and ideally it should have 36 milligrams or more of PACs. That is the critical point that we think might actually help, particularly if you have recurrent E. coli infections. E. coli is the number one cause of bladder infections. Um, and so that we think works by blocking the receptors so that E. coli can't, can't attach to your bladder because the PAC is blocking it, okay? Um, other supplements and aids and prescriptions that are still, jury is still out, but um, are looking like maybe they have some power, are D-mannose, which is a supplement that you can get over the counter. It's a natural occurring sugar that you can um, get as a supplement to increase the count in your urine, and that also can block those receptors and prohibit bacteria from attaching. Another medicine that has to be prescribed is called methanamine. That works by making the urine hostile um, and less favorable to bacteria. So this is not meant to be personal medical advice, but to kind of start the conversation for those that are suffering. Hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments, like this video and subscribe.